It's Biscuit Cat. Yes, she's very cute. Meow. And Marmalade. And of course, Hoopers Cat. Meow. Anyway, just a bit of a short video. We're having an SHCF this week, and I got all prepared for it. And then Kitty pointed out to me, we actually miss it because we're on nights. But anyways, so what they're doing is on Monday afternoon, they're shutting the whole water supply off and flushing it with noxious chemicals to try and keep the old system working. So you won't be able to draw any cold water for the entire time, which is, I think, about 18 hours. So I got all set up to flush the toilets and all the rest of it. And uh, before I dismantle that, because we're, we're at work for the entire time, I thought I'd show you what we're doing. Usually we have more soy milk than this. Uh, I actually made the mistake of sending Kitty to Costco's, but there's a case of water under there, and that's probably striking you as not enough, but we do have a few more bits of pieces floating around. So with the total water shut off, um, there's no water coming into the house because you don't want to drag it in. So you can't use the hot water either, so we wouldn't be able to shower and all the rest of it. Though at this time of year, it's like uh, 98 Fahrenheit, 32 centigrade plus humidity we could easily use one of our portable showers and that would be not problem at this time of year but what about flushing toilets well the advice to give you is to uh, fill up the container and flush toilets normally which strikes me as kind of bizarre now, down, this is our downstairs toilet so I have uh, 20 litres of water there and they are fill up with water so yeah what they're recommending is that you actually lift this up and fill this with water to flush of course what I would actually do is just lift this up and then just flush using one of these there goes marmalade and there's Becky Booster so this is what they actually put on our door uh, just to tell us that the water service is interrupted so of course obviously in grid down water service will be off forever but in this case it's a little minor disruption which if you don't notice this on your door it's going to cause you quite a lot of aggravation so this is the advice they're giving you and this is pretty good advice actually for grid down if you know the water is going to go off or there's a risk that the water is going to go off or the water is going to be contaminated you don't want it getting into your hot water systems you don't want it getting into your cold water so basically this is what you would do. Like I said, the only thing I really disagreed with here is uh, using buckets to fill the toilet tank to flush. Just flush directly into the bowl, to be frank with you. So I'm just going to film upstairs the main bathroom. Because Kitty's in the bath, so you'll hear some squeaking. The upstairs toilet, I've obviously put most of the reserve here. It was only for 18 hours. But I overreacted and I put all of the containers we have. And it was interesting, it's always worth testing your preps. This is leaking, so it has to be recycled. And we're all kind of set up for this. But we're going to be at work anyway, so I'm going to dismantle it. So like I said, I've done this before. I just pour the water directly in. And that achieves the flush without having to lift up the top. The kitty told me off for wasting water. She's actually going to use up instead of flushing just to reduce the water a little bit which is small but significant and like I say what, when these containers are empty what I would do with them generally speaking is this I'm probably going to have another massive thunderstorm tonight during the day when it's really hot I would put them out and let them uh, completely dry and fry in the sun the ultraviolet will sterilize them and then I would just put the caps back on and return them to use for later on in an ongoing SHTF uh, if we were staying in this place which we're not one of the things I would do is I would get my rain barrels out and I've got three of them and I put one by each of the toilets or three down in the basement depending if it's nuclear or not and I would keep them there 55 gallons um, like 600 litres or something like that each and I would use them I'd get them topped up I'd collect rainwater I would collect uh, water from the two streams we have right there or the little stream over there or the big river just down there like I have a lot of water available and it wouldn't necessarily be water I'd want to drink but I could flush my toilets with it I could wash cars with it I could do laundry with it obviously if you've got petrochemicals in your water supply you can't do laundry and you can't really shower with it so you're kind of in a jam at that point you want to collect water inside the house from rainwater or from deep wells or whatever you want to do so what we're actually planning to do at the Shire is uh, there's going to be three washrooms inside the house so I'm fairly sure the other couple are going to go for a flush toilet into the septic which apparently is starting on Monday and also the foundations are starting on Monday so that's exciting it's finally getting going our project and 
they're going to have the normal flush into the septic. And what we'll do is what we do at the cottage. We have the septic pumped very often. It doesn't cost that much to pump a septic. Maybe $140, $160. So every two, three years we'll have the septic pumped. So it's always going to start from a position of zero. <clears throat> what we're looking towards right now is actually composting our own human waste. So our toilet on our side would probably be a composting toilet where we would collect the human garbage and then process it for a couple of years in the proper way and then use it as compost. Now people have got a little bit about that, which is I understand. So initially the compost would just go into the forest, to be honest with you. Um, but over time, if we were in SHTF, poop from all four of us, however we were living there, all that poop would need to be collected aggressively and treated because it's about a two year time frame before you can use what's pooped out on your gardens. And obviously anybody who's sick, anybody who's got fever shouldn't be contributing to that production, which is why the flush toilets will be a great bonus. And there'll be a flush toilet downstairs as well. I've shown this before and this is just our general store of stuff. There's some water bottles up there, it's full of them. There's also some canned stuff and some horrible drinks for people who are sick. Out of interest, the tins are actually because I've got a project in mind that I want to do where I build a positive pressure chamber for nuclear uh, gas issues out of cardboard boxes, toilet roll and tins. So with it being a, basically an evening, overnight, early morning shutdown, one of the things you think about is fresh water. So we've got that covered automatically and any preps you can have that are automatically in place, working and functional, is going to be a very high bonus. I know a lot of you are dependent on tap water, right? So you may have some water put away, but it's been put away a month, two months, six months ago, not necessarily that fresh. So you're counting on running the taps to refresh water containers that are already full, or you're going to fill water containers once you know there's a problem. You might not be able to use the taps, depends on the situation. But if you have this one little product, which is really expensive but decent, that kind of gives you a buffer. I am of course talking about the Berkey filler. No idea how much this is now, it's probably in the 400 American dollar range. It's extremely good. What the price of this is, is the filters. Uh, we have two black filters and two white filters. Black filters last about 10 years for a family and they get rid of all of the bugs. Lugardia, viruses, protozoas and bacteria. And the white ones underneath, they capture for about a year, a year and a half mercury, arsenic and all sorts of goodies like that. So as long as there's not petrochemicals floating around in your water supply, this is a pretty good system. And we used to use the tap water for this, it gets rid of the chlorine and the THM and all that old stuff out of the water that's just becoming endemic in our society. So what with the probable three cases of bottled water that we have floating around, the older ones would be used for the dogs and the cats, and the ability to get a large volume of water and store it by the toilets, we could flush and drink here for quite some time. We of course have the um, solar uh, showers, but in the winter, no, they're not going to work that well. In the winter, we're going to be not washing very often, and that's the bottom line. Um, we we're going to have wet wipes, but we won't use them very much. I do have a couple of cases of them salted away, but you know, washing is going to be every couple of weeks, and we're going to stink and so are you. And laundry for us up here is going to be very, very difficult in the winter as well because it's going to be cold. So if you're prepping for short term and it becomes long term, you've got an advantage over people who haven't prepped. If you're prepping long term and you have a short term issue, mostly you're not going to really notice it too badly. Like We wouldn't notice the shutdown other than the flushing and that's easy taken care of. But if you have got a short term mentality and it does become a long term issue, you know, if you have three months supply of food stored up, you're good for three months. And obviously with rationing, that should be able to stretch to six months. We can suffer quite a lot. But harvest in my part of the world wants a season usually and the seasons occur once per year, usually. So that would not bridge me from one season of food production to the other. So if you are living in an area like I am, if you live in Southern California, that's a, this is a little different. But certainly in Canada and large parts of Eastern United States, if you've got less than a year's supply of food stored up, you're gambling that it will never be a long SHTF. And it does amuse me 
that people online clearly don't have more than a three months or six months supply of food at best and not very good quality food, not very easily used food and yet they're prepping for massive events. They're going to be dead before the massive event um, allows them to recover, to grow food, to feed them and their family for an entire year. So this is why a lot of us have been harping on about gardening, about actually growing things, about practicing, about being able to upscale quickly, to have enough food to bridge you to a harvest, to be able to bridge you to the second harvest ideally. You really do need a minimum of 15 months food for every person in your group that you're going to feed. And as I've said before, the group's probably going to be bigger than that. Flushing a toilet is a luxury in grid dam. In a short term event, there's no reason if the mains are working, the sewer mains are working, no reason why you can't do that if you have a plentiful supply of water. A lot of people don't anymore. But you can use any water for this. Better to have that than poop lying in a toilet for three days. That's what a lot of people are going to do. And a lot of people are actually going to do even worse. They're going to use the toilets and they're going to use the available water to flush it and then realize they don't have any drinking water. And that's going to be pretty sad. So a lot of people online, they concentrate on uh, security, they concentrate on bug outs, they concentrate on bug out bags, they're concentrating on left-wing politics, attacking them, the, the, all of this stuff they're all focused on. Focus on what? <laughs> right? That's after cash and finance and debt, because that's what is the SHTF for most of us in modern world, focus on water. Do you have enough adequate water for hygiene? Hygiene is vital, and drinking water if it's extremely hot, and if the source is near you are compromised or it's not safe to get to them. Do you have enough water in your house, generally speaking, day to day, to last at least a week, preferably two weeks? I have about four weeks of drinking water in the house. Most people should have at least two weeks of water in their house. And I'm asking you right now, do you have two weeks drinking water that you would drink in your house right now for everybody that might be in your house in a sudden SHTF. Anyway, that's all for me. Remember in SHTF, tomorrow will always be worse than today unless you prepare. And if you prepare, it's still not gonna be that great, but it's a good idea to have preps in place that are just automatic, like a Berkey to get rid of the stuff from the tap water because a lot of it's bad these days, in place, regular use, kept topped up, you always have that water supply in the Berkey, so you have short term, you don't have to get any water. In long term, after a day or two, if you need to get water, you need to know where to get the water from, how you can get the water, if the water gathering is going to be dangerous or not, and if so, how you avoid damage to yourself. Bye.